In case you missed my last video explaining all the differences between the Boogie Pop light novel and what we've gotten out of the first two episodes of the anime adaptation so far, I am not the biggest fan of the adaptation. However, I am very happy for its existence because it's probably the only way that there was ever going to be enough renewed interest in the franchise for the light novels to actually start coming out in America again. And that's exactly what's happened. Now in the comments of that last video, there were a lot of people asking about how best to read the novels, like what order do they go in, what pieces of Boogie Pop media are worth consuming, and so on and so forth. So I thought I'd give a hand in explaining some of that. Now, the very first book, Boogie Pop and Others, you can pretty much read this as a standalone book. It, even though, like, it, things from this book are important to later books in the series, characters will return, the plot will be built upon from here, if you were to read this as though it were the only book in the series, it would make just as much sense. It doesn't really require you to, you know, continue the story to know what happens to these characters in the sense of, their involvement with this narrative. Uh, it, it's an open and shut case. So that's why I, you know, considered it to be my favorite book for so long, is that I, I don't even really think of it as one that particularly needed sequels, even if the sequels are good and continue the story in their own interesting ways. Now, the Boogie Pop novels, like any other light novels, were written at a rapid clip. I believe the first three all came out in the same year, uh, and there's been, like, over 20 of them, maybe even over 30 in Japan. I'm looking at the list right now, they don't have numbers on them. There's also a ton of side stories that were released over there. You've got the Beats Discipline series, the Repent While Purgus series, and the em Emperor Emperoider series. All of these are like four book spin-off things that take place within the same universe. Again, as I explained in the last video, the books get a lot more complex and crazy as they go along. Um, but anyways, books two and three are a two-part arc. So this is Versus Imaginator, parts one and two. So in this case, you do have to read both books to get the complete story, but once again, it is kind of a self-contained arc. If you read these two books, you will feel as though you have achieved closure for the characters and the plot lines therein. I believe there's only uh, one narrator who returns from the first book. The others are all new characters. So... Even if you were to read these without even having read the first book, they, they probably would mostly make sense, but, you know, obviously there'd be no point in doing that. So, after that, they released the sixth book in English, Boogie Pop at Dawn. This is the one that tells the backstory of how Boogie Pop first came to be, how it first, you know, came out of Miyashita Toka, the events from five years ago that are alluded to all throughout the first book and the first two episodes of the show. So, uh, you know, it's a pretty... It's a pretty integral part of the story, but it was originally the sixth book. It was the fourth one released in America, and then they never released another one. Now, at the time, Seven Seas was trying to bring light novels to the U.S. Light novels had not caught on here when these came out. This was like 2005, 2004, when all these were released. So, uh, you know, they were like the first publisher really trying to push light novels as an idea, but since nobody had heard of them and nobody cared, they did not catch on. Uh, Del Rey would later attempt to do something similar. They released two volumes of something called Faust, which was originally a Japanese light novel magazine. They, they brought it to America, and they had two stories written, I think two, maybe just one, by Kohei Kodono of Boogie Pop. They're not Boogie Pop related, just a couple of short stories that he wrote um, that you could check out as well. But they Seven Seas themselves did try to... They were really trying to push Boogie Pop, so... They released the manga adaptation of the first book, Boogie Pop Doesn't Laugh. This is literally just the story of the first book again. Um, it does a much better job than the anime does since it's two entire volumes to adapt the book. And it's drawn by the artist of the book. So you get like completely accurate artwork. Um, it's nice in a number of ways. You get to, you know, visualize the story, uh, get to see... Um, Kami Kishiro and, uh, and, uh, what's his name, Akio Fuck, so that's cool, um, you know, it's, it's not censored in the way the anime is, it actually has nudity in it, which was described in the book, such as, well, I don't want to spoil you for episode three of the anime, so I won't show you anything, but, um, so that's fine, I wouldn't suggest it over the novel, I would say that it is good supplementary material, if you've read the novel, you could also read the, ma the, uh, the manga, um, it'll be better than also doing that for the anime. Then there was Boogie Pop Duel. This is just like a totally random side story in the Boogie Pop universe that really has nothing to do with it. 
from the artist of Blood Alone, which was a, another even more cult of manga that came out in the mid-2000s, but it's kind of a clusterfuck. I didn't think it was very good. I um, haven't read it in a long time, but I wouldn't even recommend bothering with it necessarily unless you just were like mad into Boogie Pop and wanted to consume everything. So that was all that had been released for a long time. However, because of this new anime, last year Seven Seas decided to start publishing Boogie Pop again. And they started by covering books five and six, but they released them only as ebooks initially. However, it seems as though enough attention has been brought to those books and from this new anime that they are now republishing the series in three volume at a time uh, omnibus volumes. And they are dirt cheap. You can get volumes one through three on Amazon for like $13. Um, I've seen them in stores for 20 bucks. Uh, volumes four through six are coming out in February on the 5th, I believe. So in a month from now, you'll have, you know, four through six all in one omnibus for, uh, you know, Amazon's already pre-selling it for $15. So... Yeah, it's not expensive. Now, some people have expressed concern over the fact that Boogie Pop is incomplete, that they're not sure if they will get to read the entire thing ever, so why bother with it? Well, aside from the fact that, as I said before, that the stories are mostly self-contained and, like, I mean, not, not self-contained in the sense that, like, all of the books do relate to one another, but, like... It's not like each one is a direct sequel with the same characters continuing the story as it would be in most light novels. But uh, also just the fact that if we don't buy them, then there is no chance that they'll keep coming out. I think that pretty much the only opportunity we're going to get for the Boogie Pop light novel series to continue in America is going to be if the hype of this anime causes people to go buy them. So I strongly encourage you to do so. They are good. I just read volume one in its entirety last night after watching the first two episodes of the anime. You can easily breathe through it in four and a half hours. Uh, I still greatly enjoyed it. Um, I'm going to read the other ones as soon as possible. So yeah. Um, I also will probably make videos about them, so if you're just a, a fan of me and want to see my videos, I'll probably make some kind of huge Boogie Pop thing now that I have the fucking, now that I have the platform to talk about the damn thing because people care about it. I mean, this show is already pretty successful, it's got a lot of eyes on it, it seems like. Um, I think there might be more people with it listed on Mal than there even were for the original anime. Um, and to talk about that, so there was a live action film made of the book, it's fine. Uh, like like I said with the manga, if you've read the novel, you could maybe watch the movie as supplementary material. I don't think it's worth bothering, really, um, unless you just like weird Japanese B-movies. But uh, there's also the original anime, Boogie Pop Phantom, and Boogie Pop Phantom is an interquel taking place between the first two books. It has very little to do with the actual story. There are some characters from both books one and two who show up in it, um, the main one is you get Suema and Kirima Nagi. Like, Nagi is still important in the anime. Um, she has an episode with Suema, and that's the closest you get to sort of continuing the story of the actual books. But for the most part, it's just a trippy, atmospheric, you know, post-Ava, late-night anime that had run on tech TV and shit in the 90s, so like, or in the early 2000s. So people knew about it. It has a phenomenal soundtrack that I highly recommend listening to, especially if you're into electronic music of the era. Um, it's just like got a ton of different producers on there, uh, one of them being uh, the group Sad Esper Records, which is um, the, the product of the guy who's also the Coltar of the Deepers guy who did the Penguin Drum ED and all the OPs for um, Sayonara Zetsuba Sensei, but it's like his electronic act. There's just a lot to deep dive if you go into these. I also highly recommend, if you like the first book, um, or just like Yuki Kajira, listening to the music inspired by Bookie Pop and Others soundtrack, which was made for the book. Uh, it's just really chill and great, like, sort of lounge music. Um, it also contains Yuki Kajira's arrangement or, or just a performance that she led of the song Demis Stersinger von Nuremberg. I'm probably pronouncing that wrong by composer Wagner. Um, which is, uh, I forgot to mention this in the last video, a, a massive thing to be missing from the anime because, like, one of Boogie Pop's defining characteristics is that he always whistles this song when he shows up. Um, it's like his calling card. If you play Dengeki Bunko Fighting Climax and you summon Boogie Pop as an assist, because he is one of the assists in that game, he shows up and whistles the song before using the trip wires to, like, uh, you know, to fuck up your enemy. So, um, yeah, it's really shocking that they would leave that out. 
Now, I also wanted to make a couple of just addendums to my previous video to mention a couple things that I had forgotten to, aside from the D. Mistersinger von Nuremberg thing. One of them being that a crucial element missing from the characterization of the, the sociopathic kid who's helping the Manticore is that particularly his goal is he wants to be killed by someone powerful. That is why he's in love with Nagi and why he's in love with the Manticore is he wants them to kill him. But as the story goes along, he becomes more and more intrigued by killing other people as opposed to himself being killed. But he has basically no regard for his own life. And that is not really mentioned in the uh, anime. And it's kind of like pretty much like his core motivation is his desire to die at the hands of someone special. Also, the reason that I figured that they weren't going to cover Akio's arc at all is simply because the exposition dump that Kami Kishiro gives to, I think, Nagi in the anime was originally given to Akio during one of their times where they're just like staring up at the stars and she starts ranting off about echoes. And this is also important because the anime didn't really touch on this, the fact that she's the only one who can hear Echo's thoughts. Echo's can't speak. He can only repeat things back to people that they've said to him. So the fact that she knows the truth about him is because she uniquely is able to hear his thoughts. And it's never exactly clear if this is because he chose her or if there's something special about her. That is deliberately sort of unclear, but uh, the anime doesn't even really seem to mention it at all. The whole push and pull of whether or not humanity is worth saving is, uh, you know, sort of the, the purpose of his character and, and the people he interacts with. Oh, and one last thing, at the end of the first chapter, the in the anime they have Boogie Pop do this dramatic thing where he gets up onto the high part of the roof and he's like, you know, I'm not able to have dreams, that's what you guys are supposed to do. And he had actually said that a bit earlier in the book. Um, he doesn't leave in such a dramatic fashion in the, uh, in the book. But um, what's missing is the line where after uh, Takeda comes down and, and meets Toka, she smiles at him and he, said, he remarks how Boogie Pop can't do that. And that's why it's their job to smile, is how his uh, chapter ends. So that's all the stuff I wanted to add in that I neglected to mention in the last one. Big Boogie Pub nerd here, I guess. See you in the next one.